The most life-changing thing I ever did as a writer was moving my draft from Google Docs into Scrivener. And today I'm going to share exactly how to set up a new Scrivener in just a few minutes. But before I get into that, I want to talk about why it is so helpful to use Scrivener. Like, explaining Scrivener to writers has basically become my religion. A lot of people have been like, oh, it's too confusing. I write in Google Docs and that's all I need. And listen, I think that programs like Google Docs can be really, really great for first drafts. And for some writers, they can work great forever. But if you're anything like me, I just get lost once I have more than like 10 or 20,000 words and I'm trying to manage all of the different storylines and subplots. And the way I see it is like this. Let's say you're back in like middle school. Are you one of those kids that just packs your bag by throwing like all of your crumpled paper and pens just like into the bag? Like even describing that gives me anxiety. If you're like me, my favorite day of the year was going to Staples and picking out all of my different colored binders and accessories and keeping things super organized. Break out of this metaphor for a minute and let's just say you are in Google Docs and you're trying to figure out like where you left off or you're trying to work on a different section. It just takes a lot of extra time that we often don't have as writers to go find every single thing that you're looking for. But even beyond time, it just comes down to brain space. Like how much can you hold in your brain at once? So if you're the type of person who can just write an entire draft straight through, completely in order, never looking back, hitting all of your plot points, well, first, I am very jealous of you. And second, I am not one of those people. When I get stuck, I often jump to different parts of my manuscript, which Scrivener makes a lot easier to do. And when you're trying to balance all of your different characters and your subplots and the different character arcs and the arcs of each subplot, it's really, really hard to keep that all in your brain at once and to make sure you hit all of the right points at the right time, especially when you're revising. And so just like accountants have special software, lawyers have special software, heck, we use laptops, most of us, right? We don't just write things by hand. You can do it. But technology and software, they serve real purposes and they allow us to move much faster and to utilize like, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but to utilize like the best parts of our brain as we write. So we're not just sitting there thinking like, where's my pen and where's that piece of paper? But we can just dive right in and get to the part of the story that we are working on that day. Okay, so with all of that said, let's dive in. I'm going to show you exactly how I set up Scrivener and let you know you don't need to be overwhelmed by this software, right? There's like a million different parts to it. Even I don't know, like most of those. And the point is you don't need to. You only need to know a few key features of Scrivener to get started. And really you only need those few key features for all of time to still have this be super, super powerful software. So let's get into it and I'm going to show you exactly how I set up and use Scrivener. If you want a PDF that covers all of the tips that I am about to go over, head down to the description below for a free cheat sheet on how to get started with Scrivener. The first thing we want to do is select our template. So I'm going to go to fiction and then novel and then create. This is super, super important. A lot of people get upset with Scrivener because it doesn't automatically save your work to the cloud, but there is a really easy workaround. So if you have Dropbox, you just have to make sure that where you're saving your work is a folder in Dropbox. So for me, I'm in Dropbox and then in tutorial, and then I'm going to call this my book and then go to create. And now anything that I write is automatically going to get backed up to Dropbox. I do not have to worry about losing my work, which is obviously any writer's greatest fear. All right, so there, there's a lot of stuff here and a lot of stuff that I don't use. It depends on what you're writing. Some people, you know, will do characters, places, etc. But just to start out, I use folders for chapters and then you can create a new folder here. And I also do folders for acts. So acts, I usually number. And then to change the hierarchy, you just move it 
select these and drag them in. And then chapters I don't number because Scrivener will automatically number those for you. I think they can also number acts for you, but I only use, depending on what I'm writing, I usually do three acts. So that's like, it's pretty easy for me to number them. Chapters though, you might rearrange them or rewrite them. And so you never really know what the numbers are. So you can just call them chapter and Scrivener can, can automatically number them. And then if you want a new scene, you can just press the plus sign and now we have a new scene. So if you start typing here, hi, this is a scene, you'll see that that's in italics. But if you want to put a title, you double click and we can call this scene two. Doesn't super matter. I don't include the names of scenes in my book. So usually I'll call these like descriptors of what's happening. So maybe this is like Gatsby thinks about Daisy because we are going to be using Great Gatsby. And then like Nick first scene. I don't super remember the scenes, but those are the titles and these are, are just for me to know what's going on. So I am going to copy some of the Great Gatsby in here just so we can see what it's like to have a few scenes. Now I have one act and two chapters with three scenes. I mean, I copied the same thing in each, but this is just for show. And so the first thing I want to show you, which I think is really cool, are there are three different views you can use in Scrivener. So if I click chapter, now we are in the flashcard view. I used to do these by hand and it's so, so awesome to be able to just see this automatically. So you'll notice that's just that chapter, but if I select all of these, now we can see these. And then I'm on a Mac, on a PC, it's usually the same shortcuts, but you use control instead of command. So on a Mac, command one, ooh, drafting. Command two, flashcards. Command three, outline. So super cool, we don't see too much here. It's just uh, the names of the scenes that I've put. But now, if we write a little synopsis for each scene, so I'm gonna say the first scene, uh, this is the first scene, terrible synopsis, but you know. Second scene, important scene. Okay, so now if I select these again, oh, so now we can see the synopsis, so really cool. And then if we go back to note card, you can also see the synopsis there. So already like, super, super powerful, even if that's all that you know. So next, when you are writing, I think we're all pretty particular about how we like viewing things. So what's cool is that you can change how this appears without messing with how this will appear when you compile it, which I will show you at the end. So for me, no style uh, is automatically going to go like this. So I like this font. To change the font, I am going to go to format, paragraph, so tabs and indents, I like doing 0.5. And so once again, this isn't going to show up on the final compiled manuscript, uh, but it will just show up for you as you are writing. And then I'm going to go to format. Let's see where it is. Uh, line and paragraph spacing. I like 1.1 and 12 uh, point after. Looks pretty much the same. And then to keep this formatting in any new scenes that I write, I'm going to go to format make formatting default. And then I'm just gonna click this project only. And so now every time that I start a new scene, hello, hello, hi, it has the same formatting I set. And now I can like breathe and actually keep going. Next up, we have this write section, which once again, super, super powerful just to be able to see what you're writing as well as the synopsis and the notes. So. Notes, you can include anything for any scene, but just being able to have the notes per scene is super helpful. For me, I hate deleting anything that I'm writing. So let's say I want to delete this paragraph. I would just put that right into notes. And that way, in case I want to add it up back, I have it right there. But another cool thing that you can do when it comes to deleting is you can go over to this snapshot feature. And so let's say you are about to just totally change this scene and like completely rewrite it, but you just wanna keep this. You just plus, press plus. And now this lives forever, the snapshot. And now let's say I delete this paragraph and this is my new scene. You can compare the two versions and look, it shows you you deleted that scene and we can also roll it back to the original version. So that is pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna click that to go back to the synopsis and note view. The next thing that I love, love doing is having color-coded scenes based on the status. 
Now, Scrivener actually has status down here, which I learned recently. I don't super love how they do it. Maybe I'm just not doing it right. But once again, like, you don't have to do everything perfectly. Just set things up as you like. So for me, I'm really, really big on colors. And so let's say this scene is done. So I'm going to go to Label, and I'm going to make it green because it's done. And now we see that down here, but that's not super helpful for me. So what I'm going to do is go to View, and I'm going to go to Use Label Color in Binder. All right, so now we've got that dot. I still don't super love it. So I'm going to go to View, Use Label Color in Show as Background Color in Binder. All right, so now that's green. And then let's say this one is like, I need to do a lot here, so I'm gonna make that orange. And really up to you, but I think it's just super cool to have these different colors. Now, another thing that you can do with these colors, which is really awesome, is you, if you're writing like a multiple point of view novel or just a novel where the characters are super important, you could say the green ones are like character one, the orange are character two, the blue are character three. Let's make this one blue as well. Okay, so if you go down, there's a cool timeline feature where you can see, uh, the, I'll show you. It'll make more sense when we see it. I can't actually see it and that's Scrivener for you. So what I have to do is I have to select all of the scenes that I want to see in this timeline. And now it exists. And we click that little button. Whoops. And now, see how we have those different colors we set up? It's going to show you the progression of each like main part of your story based on the color. So we had one in orange, one in green, two in blue. So I think that's really cool. for I'm writing YA Contemporary, so I don't really use this. But I think this can be really, really awesome for multiple POV or fantasy. All right, so let's get out of this. Um, and once again, yeah, I use these for status, but you can use colors for anything. So another thing that I like to do on the side is if I'm trying to keep track of all of my different subplots, what I do is I go to not label, change icon. So let's pretend the blue notepad is for the main character. So that's a blue notepad. And then let's pretend clock is like, I don't know, there's a ticking time bomb and like that's the main theme of a few scenes. So I put that there. But I really think having these icons and this visual representation is really, really important. So I do colors and then icons to arrange. All right, next up, let's talk about hitting your word count goals. So if we click that little green bullseye, we can have a target for our entire manuscript. So let's say 60,000, just click in and enter. And then a session target, we can have 1,000. And that's gonna show you how far uh, you got with each, which is really cool. If you're really into stats like I am, you can also see your writing history by going to project, writing history, and that will show you how many words that you wrote each month and each day. Next, going back to characters, another really cool thing that you can do, so let's click into this first scene, you go over to metadata, and then for keywords, you can say what characters are in the scene. So let's say this is Nick, and then Gatsby. And then let's go to the second scene, and let's pretend this is Gatsby, who we already have, and then Daisy, and then this third scene, let's say is Nick and Daisy. And now what we can do, so if you want to just edit any scenes that have Daisy in them, so first make sure you've added them as you go, and then you go to the search bar and go here, and then you go to keywords, and we're gonna do Daisy. And now that brings up the two scenes that have Daisy in them. So I think that's pretty awesome. All right, another thing that we can do, speaking of characters, if you have a lot of trouble coming up with character names like I do, you can go, I don't even remember where it lives, so I just go to search. Okay, so it's writing tools and then name generator. Okay, edit. Yeah, see, this is the thing. You just learn a few things because they're all hidden everywhere. And there's so many others that I just don't use. Writing tools, name generator. And so here, if I want a female, maybe I want a female that has uh, the same letter uh, starting her first and last name. You can also look like uh, if she's from a certain country, uh, you can set that. And you could also set, if we know the last name, so let's say the last name is K. So now I can say generate names, and then it's coming up with a bunch of first names. 
didn't really do alliteration. Maybe that's because I set the last name. Uh, here we go. So now we have a bunch of alliterative uh, names. Even, I guess they don't have to have the first sing first letter, but as long as they sound uh, the same. And the final feature that I want to show before I get into the wild compile feature is how you can view two pages at once, which can be really, really helpful. So you just click this little icon. And then if we want to change this page, we just click it over here. If we want to change this page, we click it over here. I know it's confusing because I have the same text, but okay. So now we have two separate pages uh, that we can edit side by side. And if we want to get out of this, we just click that icon. And let's say we forgot where notes and synopsis were, we click this. And if this has disappeared, it's the blue icon. So you just click that to show it there. All right, so let's talk about how to compile your manuscript. I remember going in thinking like, who cares? And then when I was querying agents, I ended up having to compile my manuscript a million times. Like anytime I made a little change, I had to recompile it. So learning how to do this really fast is super helpful. So what we are going to do is go to project and then, nope, I'm gonna go to help. I always forget where things are, compile. Okay, oh, all the way at the bottom, file, compile, sure. All right, so first make sure all these scenes are selected that you want selected. It's also selecting the title page, which is in front matter. Let me show you where that is. So front matter is down here and then title page is in manuscript format. So you're gonna wanna put like, we're gonna call this The Great Gatsby. Um, and I'm gonna say I wrote it, even though obviously I didn't. And let's say it is 50,000 words and you know, other things here. So now file, compile. We definitely want that front page at the start. And so now we're gonna define our section types, which is important because that is going to tell Scrivener the style you want to export it in. So that is front matter. So we want to select that. Act one isn't a chapter heading, that is a part heading. Chapter is a chapter heading. And then all of these are scenes then we can do scene and then we can make that a chapter. Okay, so we have select the, selected them all. And now this is the confusing part that took me like a really long time to understand. And I still don't feel like I 100% have it, but I think I have it down enough to like get by. When you go to assign section layouts, we don't have to show unused because we define them in advance. So we are just using part, chapter, scene, and front matter. So for the part, that was act one. That's just for me when I'm organizing. I don't actually have that in the book. So I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to as is. Like I just don't want act one to appear. Chapters, I do want to appear and I want Scrivener to number them. So for instance, let's say your chapters have titles. Then you could go to like uh, chapter one and then the title like that. But here I just want the chapter with the number. And that's why we don't have to number them because Scrivener will. Oh no, I want it like this. I want like the chapter right above the text. All right, then we go to scenes. For my scenes, and this is pretty standard for YA Contemporary, I just have them uh, separated with uh, hashtags, pound signs, I don't know, whatever, like this. And then front matter, I have that right up top uh, as its own page, but not with any titles. So, I think just new page. And we're gonna be able to preview this to make sure I actually did it correctly. Uh, unless you actually want to print it right away, we want it for PDF. So we do PDF and then we click compile and then we decide where we want to save it and then we click export. And great, now we have the PDF, our front matter. Yeah, I didn't write Great Gatsby, but I wrote this terrible version. Well, copy and pasted it. And then we have the title, the page count, the chapter and the text and the scenes that are separated by hashtags. We have these auto indents, but the first line isn't indented. All of this you can change, but this looks pretty good to send out to agents. So I really hope that this tutorial helped you and makes Scrivener seem just a little bit less overwhelming. And I truly hope that this helps you get your story out into the world.